¿Cómo están? Bien, gracias. Qué bueno es estar con ustedes aquí esta mañana y vamos a escudriñar las escrituras y compartir la palabra de Dios. I can see that in face. It's, it's good to be here with you today. I bring uh, greetings to you from uh, the clergy and people in the diocese of Honduras uh, and from the, the wider church. I, Uh, ask you to keep in your prayers as I walk through the process of being here and sharing with you. I've been on on the road uh, for the last week and a half, uh, so I'm still trying to recuperate from jet lag last night. All these things. So be with me as we share God's word with you today. And uh, as as we go on, I have uh, share something with you, which is part of your your culture. Uh, I'm pretty sure that you're familiar with Boudreau and Thibodeau. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, and, and I've learned these things with, you know, hanging out from, <laughs> hanging out with, with guys like y'all and, and people from the South. <laughs> and doing all these things. So there's this little story about Boudreau and Thibodeau. And, uh, Boudreau would get up in the morning and he'd drive to work. And every morning as he got up, he noticed that his neighbor, uh, Thibodeau would be out in, the, out in the field there. He went to work at 8 o'clock in the morning, came back at 4, and he would still be there. So Thibodeau would do that every day, come back, and, and Thibodeau would be there. So he got tired at the end of the week, and he said, uh, Thibodeau, what are you doing out here? Every day I drove, driven past here, and you have been here. And he said, well, I've been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. He said, What do you have? What does it have to do with the uh, Nobel Peace Prize? And you are here in this pasture, in this middle. He said, "Well, in order to qualify for the Nobel Peace Prize, you must be outstanding in your field." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it has it has a lot to do with with the scriptures today. It has a lot to do with your scriptures today, and we will get to that, but uh, uh, when I looked at those scriptures uh, for today, I looked at a very familiar story, you know, they're all familiar to us. Uh, Ephesians, which says, you know, uh, some are called to be prophets, or the priests, or the <coughs> evangelists, uh, and the familiar story that we all learned when we went to Sunday school of uh, Eli, calling to Samuel. And of course, the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few. But I, I, I looked at these passages and I, and I did some reading and one of the things I found out is that uh, there are research that uh, speaks about hearing voices, which is uh, sometimes a common experience, albeit that many people prefer to keep it to themselves. Some people be, prefer to keep it to themselves because, uh, you know, you get up on Thursday morning and you come to the office on, on, on Robinson Street and, and your uh, co-workers are coming in and, and you say to them, you know, I, I heard God speaking to me last night and somebody will look at you and say, oh, really? <laughs> uh, or, you know, sometimes you would get anxious, anxious looks because hearing voices that no one else could hear sometimes is considered as madness. So what makes of, uh, what can we make this morning of, of Samuel's experience that we read about in this morning's first uh, reading? Is it, was it madness on Samuel's part? Or was it a delusion? Or should we take it seriously? And as Christians, I think we believe that all scriptures are inspired by God and is useful for us. So I think that we have to examine seriously and see what we can learn together this morning. As, as teachers, I, I'm, I'm an educator. And as teachers, one of the things that I know from family life also, that there is a difference between hearing and listening. Mm -hmm. A lot of 
us hear, but many few of us listen. You know, sometimes uh, I, I'm at home and uh, my older daughter, wife sometimes will say to me, you're not listening to me. And then I have to take time and, and sit back and, and truly try to understand what they was, what were they saying? Sometimes we come to church and we hear, but we don't listen. You know, the Christian community is is so uh, enthused with this. Sometimes you you come to church and people go home after church, and someone will ask them, "Well, what was the sermon was about? What was the reading was about?" And they say, "Oh," and they try to look, but they weren't they weren't listening. We weren't listening. And uh, in Samuel's reading, he is called not once, not twice, but three times. And Samuel had Eli there to lead him on the way and teach him. And he said, Son, Eli found out and he said, you know, this is not anything that's happening. It's a special uh, relationship that is being established here. And Samuel, go back and lay down. And if you hear that voice again, just respond and say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Speak, Lord, for your servants here. How many of us are called? But since we are not listening because we are only hearing, then we cannot establish that relationship because I think that for there to be a relationship, there must be what we know as communication. Before you can establish a relationship, there must be communication. You need to hear, you need to know what that person wants. One of the things that I was sharing with uh, Wesley as was driving uh, here this morning is a mere fact that I've received so many gifts and, and things from God, but one of the things that I've received from God, and not that I'm, I'm wanting to have it, is the gift of divination. If someone, if I'm in a place with someone, you need to talk to me. Because I can't guess. We need to talk to each other. Be it in, in uh, an office relationship, be it with your peers, be it at home, you need to talk. If there is no communication, there is no relationship. And that's what was being developed between Samuel and God. There had to be a relationship with God. And relationship depends, as I said, upon communication between God and His people. If they're not really listening, God really couldn't talk to them. So you see, sometimes we get very comfortable in, in where we are. We get comfortable with the regularity of religion and ritual. We get comfortable with the familiar words and we don't really hear them. And deep inside, we probably know that it is sometimes uncomfortable when God speaks to us and we don't like it sometimes when sermons go on too long. <laughs> because it increases the possibility that God might get through to us. <laughs> probably it's not right because we're not reading the proper edition that we're accustomed to. Sometimes it's not good because it doesn't have the D and the thou. But we are too, we too are covenant people. We have inherited the new covenant that God has put in place through Jesus Christ. You know, he is calling us. 
Scripture says, you know, maybe God is calling you to be an accountant, uh, an evangelist, a prophet, a priest, or a deacon. But one of the things that God expects of us is that we may be outstanding in the field for Him. No matter what, but above all, I think there must be receptiveness of God's Word. You know, I always ask myself, why this portion of Scripture in the first reading from Samuel uh, is, is there, and it is verses 1 through 10. But if you read the context, there are other things that was going on why that word came to Samuel. You know, Pinaeus and uh, his brother was doing things in the church that was not pleasing to God. And God called Samuel, and after God called Samuel and spoke to Samuel, Eli called him back and said, you must tell me. I need to know what God said to you. And sometimes some of us are uncomfortable with hearing God's word. Sometimes the church is not comfortable with hearing God's word. And as Samuel responded to God's call, speak Lord for your servant hears. Samuel, for all his physical and probably, let's say, spiritual immaturity, was receptive to God, to the idea that God wanted to speak to him. I wonder, as I walk around in the church, how receptive we are to God's Word. I wonder how much we really expect God to speak to us. Sometimes, we are so grown up about things that we dismiss the idea that God still speaks to His church today. We need to be expecting God to speak to us in the everyday life, maybe in a sermon, maybe in a meeting that you have. Uh, he speaks to us now. So if you're... Uh, co-partner, the bishop, or a deacon, or a priest, or someone in your neighborhood come up to you and said, God, speak to me, spoke to me this morning, and he gave me this message. Would you dismiss it as a person being mad? Or the word from God? Remember that yet God wants to communicate with us. God wants to have a relationship with us. But that relationship depends on communication. We need to be receptive to God's word. We need to be asking and expecting God to speak to us. And when we allow God to speak to us, things begin to happen in our lives. Things begin to happen in the church. Verse 19 said that Samuel grew and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fell to the ground. Samuel's receptiveness to the Lord had a result, and the result for him, and the result for his country, his nation. The first thing that we see is that Samuel grew up, that Samuel realized that God's words were truly God's word. And you know what happened after that? God appeared regularly to Samuel. And he spoke to him continually. No longer was the word of God a rarity in the nation. No longer was the word of God ignored. But at last, hearing God's word was a regular occurrence. It became the restoration of the relationship between God and his people. But it didn't stop there. Because the result of receptiveness is God and His Word make a difference in the world you and I live in. I believe quite strongly that one of the reasons the church has been ineffective in the recent past is because we have ignored God's Word. 
Usually wherever I go, I usually walk with my Bible. And sometimes people think, oh, there is another, uh, I don't know what they're called, but, uh, but I don't care. <laughs> you know? If we're going to have a relationship and we're going to be receptive to God's Word, we must be outstanding in every shape and form. But we live in a world which is desperate, in desperate need of God. We live in a world which needs a relationship with Him and a deep and outstanding one. And God is calling us, you know, the, the laborer, the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few because we don't want to risk it out there for God. We give God excuses. We don't have a relationship with Him and that needs to turn around, that needs to change. It is not about, if we are Episcopalians, Presbyterian, Methodist or whatever, it's not about our religion, it's about not about our ritual. If we're using right A or B or 1 or 2 or B or C, it doesn't matter if we lit the candles or we don't. <laughs> is how well we receive and we establish that relationship with God. And God is willing. The harvest is plentiful. It's out there waiting for us. You know, as I go around this country, one of the things I, I find that it's a reality that there's a community that's exploding in this country. very little attention being paid to it. It's a Hispanic community that we have growing all around us. <laughs> but sometimes I think that, you know, when the Episcopal Church says, you have, te damos la bienvenida, we welcome you, I usually ask and say, is that really <laughs> So as God's people here, we need to be receptive to His Word. We need to be outstanding in the field out there for Him. Even we are called to be evangelists, prophets, priests, deacons, accountants, doing God's work. And in doing so, be expectant and listening and receptive to God's word. Don't brush it off or pass it by. And if we do so, we will have a life-changing relationship which will change the world around you, the world around me, and the world we all live in. God is the God that spoke to Samuel. God is the God that will speak to you today. God is calling you and calling us in a deeper relationship with Him. Amen. Amen. Amen.